In this example, I'll be performing a buckling analysis using shells and cylindrical coordinates. Full details of this exercise are on page 405 in the PDF linked in the video description below. I'll begin by starting Patran. And the units for this example are in inches, pounds, and PSI. I'll call this database problem 17. And I'll hit OK on the form on the right. And I'll first define my geometry. So I'll make a curve using the line by XYZ method. The radius of this cylinder is 5. So I'll type in 0 for the x, 5 for the y, and 0 for the z. And I'll start from the origin. Next I want to rotate this, or revolve it, about the z-axis. So that would be the third direction for coordinate system 0. I want to rotate it 180 degrees, and I'll select this curve. So this is one of the caps for the cylinder. Next thing I want to do is uh, create the rest of the cylinder as shown. So under surfaces, I'll select extrude. My translation vector, it will be 0 in the x and y and negative 20 in the z. And for my curve list, I'll select this curve. Next, I'll want to define my last cap here for the cylinder. To do this, I go to Transform Surface. For my direction vector, I select 0 in the x and y, and negative 20 in the z. And I'll select the surface. And that's defining my cylinder so far. I'll create my cylindrical coordinate system by going to Coordinates, 3 point and selecting under types, cylindrical, accept the default values here and hit apply. Now what I want to do is look at my normals for this. Under action, go to show surface normal. And here under surface list, either pick all or individually pick the surfaces. Uh, to make this easier on us, hit the surface icon here. So the only thing you pick are surfaces. And since auto execute is on, it performs the auto operation automatically. So this is what we have in regards to normals. For this uncap, the normals into the cylinder. Now let me shade this. For this cylinder section, the normals inward. But for this uncap, the normal is actually outward. When we define our pressure, it's important that we have all of these normals facing inward. So what I'll go ahead and do is modify this end cap surface. So here, go to Edit, Object, the Surface, and under Method, go to Reverse. I'll select this surface. I'll draw the normal vectors to see it again, and you see it's outward. After I select this surface and hit apply, and I draw the normal vectors again, now the normal is pointing inward. So when I go and define my pressure, give it the name pressure, target element type is two dimensional for input data. My top pressure is negative 100. Hit OK for application region select the surface icon and pick all. Surfaces 1 through 3 are added to the application region, hit apply. Now my pressure is defined inward for each surface. If the normal for this end cap were to be pointing the other direction, the pressure here would actually point outward and we didn't want that, so we corrected it. Now going back to geometry, we've defined the geometry, we can move on to properties. For my material, I'll create an isotropic one. I'll call it matte. 
under input properties, my Young's modulus is 10 E6, and my Poisson ratio is 0.33. I'll hit OK and hit Apply. Now I'll define my uh, two dimensional properties. So here under Shell, property set name is prop. Under input properties, use the material we just made, give it the thickness of 0.125 inches. For your application region, uh, make sure you have surface selected here. Pick surfaces one through three, add it to the application region, select OK and hit apply. Now I can continue on with this by defining my displacement constraints. Under new set name, create one called tangential. For your input data, prevent translation in the second direction and prevent rotations about the third direction. And we are not using the coordinate system zero, we're using the cylindrical one, coordinate system one. Hit OK for application region. We wish to select all of these edges here. So click curve or edge here. So the only thing you can pick are curves. I'll simply uh, drag and select and I'll add it. And you'll see I added these two extra surfaces or edges. So I can select this one, click remove select this one and remove. And you see that the orange highlighted curves are the ones that are included in the application region. And it's important that you make sure that these four edges are inside of here. Hit OK and hit apply. Next, we want to define a radial constraint. So I'll call this next one radial under input data. I want to prevent Translation in the one, two, and three directions. I'll leave the rotations blank. The analysis coordinate frame is one. For application region, we want to select two points. The center point and the center point. Hold the shift key to select multiple entities. Click add, okay, and apply. And if I go to the model tree, expand the LBCs, I can turn off the tangential condition and I can see my radial condition here so it's been applied to these two points next I need to define one last condition but that will have to wait until I mesh this moving on to the meshing tab I want to define a requirement that says 12 elements along a few curves so click mesh seeds uniform leave auto execute on so when I pick a curve it automatically makes a seed so I want 12 elements here I want 12 elements on this curve but you'll notice there are two curves so I won't do that yet here I want 12 elements and here again I have two curves so I have to change this to 6 and when I select this curve I'll make 6 and when I select this curve I'll make another 6 and the same for this curve and this curve I want 20 elements along this length and 20 elements along this length. So now when I go and use the surface measure, use quad, quad four, I'll have to use a different measure for each uh, section. For the whole, use quad elements and select um, this middle surface here, surface two, and hit apply. For your end caps, switch it to tria. And this time you'll select surface three, apply to mesh. And then the surface, surface one, and apply to mesh. And one thing we have to always do is hit equivalence to remove any duplicate nodes. You'll find that it's deleted some here and on this side too. Uh, 
I'll go ahead and uh, reorient this so I look at it from the side. And uh, I'll have to define my last boundary condition. So under nodal displacement constraint, I'll call this one center axial. My input data, I'll prevent movement in the third direction for coordinate system one. Click OK. This time, instead of the geometry, we'll apply this to the fem or the nodes. Make sure nodes is selected here. And pick and select the middle nodes. Now, if you're skeptical, you've chosen the wrong one. What you can do is, under meshing, you can go to action show no location. And we know that the hole is 20 inches in length. So we know we need to pick the nodes at uh, 10 inches. So here it is, 10 inches. So I've selected the right one. Let me actually reorient this again. So that would be this. This set of nodes is the one where we have to apply our uh, boundary condition. Let me go back here, apply it to these, add OK and apply. Let me turn on the other boundary conditions. And let me turn on the pressure. Now to get a better idea of how the boundary conditions are applied, you can go to display, load BC element props here, check on show on fem only and hit apply. Clean it up, turn these off and on. You'll see the constraints here. And then you can see the pressure here. And again, the pressure should be applied inward. Let me uncheck, or I'll leave that on. Now I can go ahead and analyze this, or before I do that, if you recall when I saw the location of a node, it's currently using the global system for the reference and analysis coordinate system. I'll go ahead and use the cylindrical coordinate system. So under action, modify, object is node, method is edit, and under analysis and reference, I'll select this coordinate system called chord one. And for my node list, I'll pick all the nodes and hit apply. Here I get the feedback, all the nodes have been modified. And now I'm ready to analyze this. Under the Analysis tab, go to Analyze Entire Model. Under Solution Type, switch it to Buckling. And hit OK. Under Subcases, select Default. And make sure it's been dropped here. So it says Default here too. Under Subcase Parameters. Oh, this is not it. Under, back in solution type, go to solution parameters. Under eigenvalue extraction, we want a limit of 100 for the eigenvalue range. I'll click OK here, OK here, OK here, and I'll hit apply to analyze this. Once that's done, you can click XDB import the results, go to the results tab, click on quick plot fringe, and here you can already tell what my buckling factor is, and I'll simply view the, the results really quickly. And here, uh, what I have to do next is uh, multiply the pressure I applied by this factor, and uh, that would be the actual load at which uh, this cylinder buckles. So here they had a value of uh, theoretically 256 PSI, where in fact they should get uh, 270 PSI. So if I take this value, I'll round it up to 2.7. If I go back to my pressure, And I can multiply this by 2.7. Or what I'll do instead is I'll modify the load case. So 
So here for the pressure, it currently has a scale factor of uh, one. I can change it to 2.7. And uh, you can click OK or hit apply here and I'll take the new value. So when I go back to analysis and analyze the entire model, I'll take that 2.7, multiply it with the original pressure of 100 for a resulting pressure of 270 PSI. And when I import my XDB results and view the results again, my buckling factor is approximately 1. And the buckling shape is almost the same. And if you want to clean this up, you can uh, go to deformation attributes and uncheck show undeformed. If you want to see the mesh on the deformed shape, you can come to fringe attributes here, switch this to element edges. And here you can see that the geometry is still there. And I can hide that by going to home and hitting plot erase geometry. And now you see the green line of the geometry is now gone. If you want to bring it back, you can click it and it's back again. And just to show you again, I guess I'll have to do it the other way. And there you go. And that's a buckling example. Make sure to save and that concludes this example.